This week's blog post is the fourth in my series on a visit to the Wadsworth Athenaeum. The introduction to this series about the Wadsworth family and the Wadsworth Athenaeum is on my blog site, and there's a link in this blog post to all the other posts in the series. We are continuing this week with the Hudson River School paintings in chronological order. Just a reminder, these are the artworks that the Wadsworth that caught my eye on my first visit and that I have decent photos of or could find photos of online. The Wadsworth has many, many more works. This one is called Home in the Wilderness. It's by John Dennison Crocker and it was painted in 1853. Crocker, 1822 to 1907, a Connecticut native, was very influenced by Thomas Cole and painted many of the subjects that were beloved of the Hudson River School artists. In this work, he shows the land being tamed rather than the vast American wilderness. Here's a quote. There's a link to the site on the blog post. Quote, Crocker's powers of observation in portraiture and landscape painting, as well as in researching materials and techniques for developing modern goods, make him a clear product of the Industrial Revolution. A realization that industrialization would make a permanent mark on Norwich, Crocker's birthplace, might have prompted him to record and thus preserve his family, fellow Norwichians, and the city's agrarian environs on canvas. End of quote. That same site notes that in addition to painting, Crocker derived income from Crocker's magical stomach powders, which purported to be a sure cure for indigestion and all bowel difficulties and colds. This piece is called Zenobia in Chains. It's by Harriet Goodhue Hosmer. It was finished in 1859. I just wanted to give you a reminder that although the Hudson River School was popular among some American painters, many others continued to work in the neoclassical style that had emerged in France during the late 18th century. Hosmer, who studied in Rome, focused on sculpting women known for their strength and wisdom. Zenobia was ruler of Palmyra, Syria, from 267 to 272 AD. After the Romans captured her kingdom, she was led in chains through Rome. Hosmer said, quote, I have tried to make her too proud to exhibit passion or emotion of any kind, not subdued, though a prisoner, but calm, grand, and strong within herself. End of quote. Hosmer sold the original and several copies of Zenobia, which differed only in the design of the belt buckles. There are versions of it at the Huntington Library and the St. Louis Art Museum in the U.S. Next up, Frederick Edwin Church painting from 1863 called Coast Scene, Mount Desert, or Sunrise Off the Main Coast. Church traveled to the main coast at least seven times in the 1850s and 60s. This painting, based on an oil sketch that he did on the site, is one of his best seascapes. Mount Desert Island, home of Bar Harbor and Acadia National Park, is about as far north and east as you can get on the coast of Maine, which means it's about as far north and east as you can get on the eastern seaboard of the United States. The Wadsworth label notes that Church and his fellow landscape painters helped popularize natural wonders such as Mount Desert Island as a goal for vacationers. The Wadsworth site includes an excellent PDF on this work and its context and on Church. I've given you a link to that. After Thomas Cole's death in 1848, Church became the leading figure in the Hudson River School. By 1860, he was the leading painter in the United States. Inspired by the work of Alexander von Humboldt, of whom there is a bust in New York City, Church traveled to South America in 1853 and 1857. He became the first American to paint that region using detailed sketches from his trip. Church's most famous works are huge canvases showing South America, for example, Heart of the Andes at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. When it was put on view in New York in 1859, Heart of the Andes drew 12 or 13,000 people who each paid 25 cents to view it. Church died a wealthy man. Next up, Winding River, Sunset, painted by Martin Johnson Heed around 1863. Sunset on a salt marsh. The photo doesn't really capture the charm of the painting, and it's also too yellowish, but I'm not willing to mess about with editing the color unless I've got the original in front of me. But I really do like this painting. You can just barely see the colors in the distance. Heed is one of the luminists who began as a subset of the Hudson River painters. They predate the Impressionists, and although they're also entranced with light, 
The Luminists, unlike the Impressionists, are meticulous about representing details, which is one of the reasons I really like them. Next up, Albert Bierstadt's In the Mountains, 1867. Bierstadt, 1830 to 1902, is famous for enormous, sweeping landscape views that glorified the potential of the American West. He painted them in his New York studio based on sketches made during his trips west in 1859 and in 1863, when he spent seven weeks in the Yosemite Valley. This particular painting is a composite scene drawn from several locations in the West. Bierstadt's paintings were enormously popular. His fame is only rivaled by that of Frederick Edwin Church. And the final one for this week, Winslow Homer, The Nooning, painted around 1872. Nooning is a midday rest period. Homer is famous for his marine paintings, but for 20 years at the beginning of his career, in the 1850s, 60s, 70s, he was an illustrator. In fact, Harper's Weekly in August 1873 had a black and white wood engraving that's very similar to this piece. Not quite the same. Starting in 1875, Homer gave up illustration completely and devoted himself to oils and watercolors. Among the earliest and most famous of his works at this period was Breezing Up, painted in 1873-76, to 76, which is at the National Gallery, Washington. And next week we will do some more works by Hudson River School artists, including luminists. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantyWriter.com. Thanks as always for listening.